Well, welcome everyone. Uh, it's such a beautiful day and we are delighted that so many of you turned out for what we hope and believe will be a very rewarding and <laughs> educational experience for all of you. My name is Brian Brewer and I'm Director of Marketing and Communications at the Cancer Research Institute, the organization that is, uh, has put today's program together. So it's an honor and privilege to uh, do the summit again in New York City for the third year. New York is where we kicked off our summit. Our organization is headquartered right downtown, so it's a natural fit. And we're very delighted this year to have as our partners uh, a gracious host. And I'd like to just invite Dr. Charles Drake for a moment to come on up and uh, bid you all welcome. Good, good morning and welcome to uh, Columbia University. I think that um, patients and their families in New York who um, are unfortunate enough to have cancer are lucky in that they have a, a series of great institutions that they can access, Memorial Sloan Kettering, NYU, and, and, and here Columbia actually. We have experts here today from all three. Um, and. Um, I think I'd also like to uh, just say a few words of thanks to the folks at Columbia who work very closely with Brian and his team. So Emer Smith, Don DeLeon, and Tahisha Ruff helped um, on our side to organize this. But um, you know, who really deserves the thanks is none of us, actually. It's the patients and the families who are coming out here. This is a patient summit, and this day is all about patients and their families. It's a time to learn things uh, and to ask questions, actually. So we thank you for coming and for coming to Columbia. Thanks. So since we kicked off our summit series three years ago, we've had the honor, uh, thanks to generous sponsorship, to be able to roll this out to additional markets throughout the United States. So we're, we've been all over the country, in the Midwest, and on the, on the West Coast, and in the South. And everywhere we go, uh, we hear that those who attend, like you, find this an extremely valuable experience. So uh, we're sure you're going to have the same. All right, just uh, thank you once again to our host. <laughs> And of course, uh, none of this would be possible without the generous support of our sponsors, who are all pictured here. So thank you very much, sponsors, for your support. And then, of course, also our promotional partners. These are community and advocacy organizations that have put the word out about today's summit, and uh, both here and, and across the country. So we're very grateful for their support as well. So just for, for a show of hands, before I, I get into today's program, uh, just curious, um, how many of you were here last year? Okay, good number. And how many of you are patients? Okay, so about half the room. And how many are caregivers? Roughly the other half. Okay, great. And then do we have any advocates or other representatives here? Okay, welcome. Welcome all of you. Thank you. Uh, how many of you have heard of cancer immunotherapy before? I like to see all those hands. That's good. <laughs> uh, and how many of you have actually been treated with immunotherapy? Okay, good. So we've got a lot of folks who have had some first-hand. I'd ask you just to hold your hands up a little longer. If you're a patient, um, you know, we will have patients sharing their stories here later today. But all the folks who have their hands up, if they're willing to meet and greet with you uh, during the lunch hour, please feel free to ask them questions. How many of you have participated in a clinical trial? Okay, so not, not so many. Uh, so, so I'm really delighted that we're going to be able to talk a little bit today about what clinical trials are and how they can be an extremely valuable part of your treatment plan. And they're also great for research and getting the field forward and helping other patients with cancer. So uh, it's an exciting time in immunotherapy. Um, and in just a moment, I'm going to have our CEO, Dr. Jill O'Donnell Tormey, come up and talk a little bit about our organization. That's me. All right, so as I mentioned, uh, we're joined by a fantastic panel of scientific et experts and patients today. Uh, their bios are in the program, so I'm not going to waste time going through that, but please do give them a read if you haven't already. But we're very delighted to be joined by Drs. Charles, uh, Chuck Drake, whom you met already, Dr. Catherine Diefenbach from the Perlmutter Cancer Center at NYU Langone Health, Gulam Manji, uh, Manji at New York Presbyterian Columbia University, right here, Dr. Jed Walchuk, and then Margaret Callahan will be joining us later, both from Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. And then, of course, we have the patient experts. These are the people who've been treated with immunotherapy and are here to share their story with you. We have Carrie Alvarado, pancreatic cancer patient, Beller Bhagavan, Bhagawan, excuse me, a bladder cancer patient, Gloria Garcia, lung cancer, Karen Kohler, chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Karen will also be 
presenting our keynote uh, uh, talk, patient talk in just a moment, and then Adrian Skinner, ampullary cancer. So today's events uh, will begin, as I said, with an intro by our CEO and our Director of Scientific Affairs, Dr. Jill O'Donnell Tormey, followed by Dr. Chuck Drake, who will give a 101 on the basics of immunology and immunotherapy. This will help arm you with the vocabulary that you'll hear throughout the day so that you'll understand when we talk about a T cell or, or, or CAR T therapy or a checkpoint blockade, you'll, you'll have a, a better understanding as the day goes on of these things. Uh, then Drs. Diefenbach, Manji, and Walchuk will join Dr. Drake up on the stage for a panel discussion where experts will share the latest developments uh, in immunotherapy in their particular areas of research. And then following the panel, Karen will give her perspective as an immunotherapy patient. Then we'll break for lunch. We'll have about an hour break for that. We really encourage you to talk with each other. If, if there was something one of the experts said that really in interests you and you want to learn more, that's a good time to just walk up to them and introduce yourself and, and ask them a question. Um, <clears throat> then the program will resume at 1 p.m. And uh, we'll do an introduction of clinical trials. And after that, we'll follow with the patient panel, uh, folks who have received immunotherapy, either as part of the standard of care, which is becoming increasingly common, or in clinical trials. And then following that, we will have a... Uh, a 15-minute break. We'll transition into the breakout sessions. Now we're on a bunch of different floors. We'll review those floors before we break out, uh, but there is signage by the elevators in case you're confused. If you signed up for a breakout session and then change your mind and want to go to another, that's perfectly fine. Uh, just go where you feel like you're going to get the most uh, information that's of value to you. So with that, we'll get started. Oh yes, right. After the summit, you're going to re you'll see the slide again later today. After the summit, you're going to receive two emails from us. The first, the first is going to be this uh, request as a survey to get your feedback. Your feedback is extremely important. We read absolutely every comment, every word, and we take it all to heart, and we make sure that we incorporate that into how we plan for next year's summit series. And then, the slide doesn't want to stay with me. Um, <laughs> Then we will send all the information that you will see today. So a, a lot of you um, may want to furiously write down every piece of information you see on these slides. Don't worry, we will be sending these slides to you after the summit. So give your hands a break and absorb and enjoy the day. So with that, I'd like to welcome Dr. Jill O'Donnell Torn. Well, thank you, Brian, and thanks to Columbia for hosting us today. Uh, it's, you know, I'm really happy to see almost a full auditorium today. I've been at the Cancer Research Institute for more than 31 years, and in that time, I have seen such amazing progress in cancer treatment, and it's really thanks to the power of the scientific research funded by our organization. For the past 65 years, we have had a singular mission dedicated to research on the immune system and how it interacts with cancer, with the ultimate goal of developing effective treatments for all cancers utilizing the immune system. It is an amazingly exciting time in immunotherapy, and the involvement of patients, caregivers, and advocates is crucial in helping to ensure cancer patients of all types have access to these important new therapies. Many of you may not know much about the Cancer Research Institute, but it is a public charity that has relied on the generosity of individuals, foundations, and corporations to support our work. We are not endowed, and we raise our operating budget each year from philanthropic sources, and we receive no government funding. CRI is a top-rated charity thanks to our commitment to transparency and spending donor dollars responsibly, ensuring every donation makes the most impact. It is really gratifying to me to see that the research we have supported over these past 65 years has provided the foundation of discovery of today's cancer immunotherapies that are extending and saving lives. In the past seven years alone, the FDA has approved 15 different immunotherapies in 15 different tumor types. And in some cases, immunotherapies have been approved as a first-line treatment, replacing chemotherapy. Additionally, an immunotherapy has also received the FDA's first tissue site agnostic approval. And what that means is that, is that it can be used to treat any cancer that exhibits a certain genetic mutation independent of the tumor's original tissue site of origin. So we are at a place that we have never been before. 
we have the proof of principle that the immune system can indeed be mobilized to treat cancer. But despite these remarkable achievements, more research is needed in order to maximize the effectiveness of immunotherapies for more cancer patients. We need, not, we need not only to understand the biology of the immune system and translate those basic discoveries from the lab to the clinic, but we also need to understand the ways that the cancer and the immune system interact within a given patient. From this combined knowledge, we can develop rational strategies to treat every patient more effectively. The Cancer Research Institute helps to accomplish this by supporting the entire spectrum of discovery from the lab to the clinic and beyond. Now, as more patients have been treated with immunotherapy, CRI has responded to, to a growing need for patient and caregiver education. With our history and our expertise, we have become a trusted source of information about cancer immunotherapies for newly diagnosed patients and their caregivers and those undergoing treatments. Now, today's meeting is an extension of those efforts. One of the main things we hope you leave with today is a sense of empowerment and how to better advocate for yourself or your loved one, and I truly believe that the information and knowledge imparted today will go a long way to giving you confidence to explore with your physicians whether immunotherapies are an option for you. Now, when we look back at the history of the field and the Cancer Research Institute, it all started with patients. In the 1890s, Dr. William B. Coley, who was a surgeon here in New York City, noticed that occasionally some cancer patients went into remissions when they contracted an acute bacterial infection. He went on to create a mixture of bacteria that was called Coley's toxins, which he then injected into an inoperable sarcoma of his first patient, Mr. Zola, who, believe it or not, had a complete remission and went on to live many years afterwards. Now, although Coley did not understand the underlying mechanisms behind how his toxins worked, his daughter, Helen Coley Nautz, believed after her father's death that the medical community had prematurely abandoned her father's work. She founded the Cancer Research Institute to study Coley's toxins and the link between bacteria and cancer remission, and in so doing spawned the field of cancer immunology. We now know that the bacteria in Coley's toxins attracted the immune system to the tumor site into which it was injected, and Coley is now known as the father of cancer immunotherapy. Now, in 2018, we have a much better understanding of how the immune system works and how it does interact with cancer and how cancers have suppressive mechanisms to turn off the immune system and evade immunological destruction. We have new and exciting technologies that enable us to overcome this suppression and also to enhance the immune cell activity against cancer. Now, to reach CRI's mission to save more lives by fueling the discovery and development of powerful immunotherapies for all types of cancers, we will need to rely not only on the scientists and clinicians around the world who are working on this critical challenge, but we also the patients who are at the center of it all. We cannot make progress without patient participation. As the number of people being treated with immunotherapy grows, CRI has recognized the growing need to, be to, to create trusted resources for patients, and we provide this information on our website, which I'm sure you all have, is www.cancerresearch.org. And we have an immune community among patients where you can share your stories with others. And of course, patient summits like this one provide firsthand information to patients and caregivers. I think it's going to be a very special day, and I am thrilled that the Cancer Research Institute can bring this all to you. And now I'd like to bring Chuck Drake back up, who's going to provide the introduction to you on the basics of cancer immunology. Oops. Thanks, Chuck. Hi.